John Copeland has been kind enough to to join us, uh, taking a little break from teaching class over at Tuscaloosa Academy to visit with us about his friend Jeremy Nunley. John, I know that uh, that defensive line group in 1992, of course, Jeremy was a junior when you were a senior, but y'all had a tight bond. Uh, he was a terrific football player, a great friend. Uh, what, what, what did you, you know, what were your thoughts when you heard the news that he passed away? You know, Gary, it, it, it's just heartbreaking. You know, not not only, I mean, not only, you know, when you accomplish something like we did back in 1992, you build strong and lasting relationships. And with Nolly being local here in Tuscaloosa, I got an opportunity to see him often. And it's just heartbreaking. And, and, I, and I know his wife very well. And I just can imagine what they're going through, him and her and his daughters. I had Kareem McNeil on earlier, and he was talking about what a challenge it was to block him in practice. And the thing about Nunley, and I didn't know him. Uh, I'd met him one time and did not know him. But talking with you and talking with other folks that played with him and knew him well, was he was out off the field. He was gregarious, outgoing, good old country boy, loved to joke. But on the field, and I mean this is a compliment, John, he had a mean streak. He was a little bit nasty on the field, wasn't he? Oh, yes, he was. You know, uh, you know, and, and Jeremy, and people don't realize this, he was just the biggest part of that defensive line as many Eric was. He came in and played. That's right. A lot of football uh, during during that time, and you know, and, and the thing about him, man, he just had this larger than life personality. You, you get around a guy, you just feel so comfortable, and you just make everybody laugh. And it, it, it's just always a pleasure to be around him. And I had an opportunity to actually go home with him for a weekend up in Tennessee, and got a chance to meet his mom and dad. And it was just a pleasurable time. Really, really good people. Uh, tr- great hospitality. And I just felt so welcome when I was there. Oh, man, that's a great story. Yeah, you mentioned how much he played in 92. And, of course, 93 was a starter. But people forget because they, they think of you all as a three-man uh, line. But you played a lot of even front. And there'd be a lot of times that you and and uh, Nunley and, and and Curry were all in there together. Uh, oh, going, I, and, I, and, and Antonio London, too. Y'all would line up in a four-man front and get after that passer. That's still on third down. On third down, it was it was always a four-man front with me and Nunley being the inside guys. And uh, and and, I, and you can't never un- underestimate it because man, Eric took so much of the I guess publicity. But people truly underestimate just how important a role that he played on that national championship team. You know, I was talking with this, uh, talking with Kareem about this, but I've already seen tweets from Mark McMillan and, and all you guys. Uh, every team has a bond. I understand that, but that '92 team really had a special bond because um, that was the first national championship that had been won at Alabama since Coach Bryant. There wouldn't be another one won until 2009 under Coach Stallings. So for a long time, you guys were the team that a whole generation of Alabama fans related to as far as a championship. And uh, yes. and you, you that group, you you guys really have a special bond, don't you? There's no question about it, Gary. Uh, we get together at least once a year, and that's normally during the 8th, during the 8th. And it's like, you know, it's like we never left each other. The, the conversations pick up. They are uh, the interactions picked up right, right where we left off, and it's just it's, it's so heartbreaking because this one, you know, I mean, we've had some some guys pass with from the Alabama program before, but this hit so close to home mm-hmm. because I spent so much time with this man, so much time with his family, and it's just it's just heartbreaking. Mm. John, before we let you go, what will your what will your lasting memory of, of Jeremy Nunley be? You know, I remember this, and, and he told me the story a little bit later, late in life after I got done playing in the NFL. But I don't know if you remember it. I want to say back in 93, there was a blizzard came through it, a, a snow blizzard, yep, and, and there was. was snow everywhere. And I'm driving through this blizzard trying to get back to the dorm, and I see this big old guy walking through the blizzard. I'm like, who is this fool? <laughs> and the closer I get to the guy, I realized it's Jeremy Nunley. <laughs> and I get him in the car and he is mad. I'm like, what is going on with you, man? Well, come to find out, Marty, his his wife, now, uh, parent was in town, parents was in town, and she wouldn't let him stay, so she made him walk back to the oh. dorm in the blizzard. My goodness. And, he, and look, at he, and me and him was together, me and him was together one night, and he said, I want you to know, that John Copeland saved our relationship because I was done with you because I had to walk on the back. <laughs> Man, that is a great story. He was he was ready to, to turn the page, and you happened to pick him <laughs> yeah. up, save the relationship. That's a great story, John. Well, listen, I know you got to you get back to class, but we're all you know we're all grieving, and as you said, condolences to his wife and and two daughters. He's certainly going to be missed. Thanks a lot, John Copeland. Hey, no problem, man. Y'all take care.